All right, all right. Peace to the family. Peace to the family. Shout out everybody out there. Y'all see what it is tonight. All right, gonna have an amazing show. About to bring a morning a living legend. I mean, I'm about to bring royalty on the show again. So, um, so before before I bring um, before I bring Sister Myra on, let me uh get to a commercial. And we will be right back, family. Hit that like button. Tell your friends and family we're live. We're going to have a great show tonight. We'll be right back. It's the new motivational session with King Simon. Text your full name and date of birth to 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. And get my books on Amazon now. Hey there. Had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself. It's only a dream, and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest, too. Check it out. My pet, Petey, was with me. Order your copy of Kayla, Petey, and the Forest on Amazon today. All right, so we are we are now back, family. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I've been, uh, real quick, I've been going for a couple of days off of YouTube. I've been, um... In the studio with Cam Bada, we're working on the Holy Ghost 3 family. So I've just been uh, wrapped up in that, dedicating full undivided attention to that. So I just took the weekend off from YouTube. and uh, But it's good to be back here. Always good to be back here. And um, always good to have Sister Myra on here. So without further ado, got to bring on Sister Myra Moss. <laughs> hey, good to have you back on here. Well, thank you, Brother Rich. It's always good to be on your show. Um, back to the, with the family again, and, um, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. So, um, whatever we can uh, get into, you know, how's everything been, how's everything been since the last time you've been on? Oh, it's been fantastic. Everything is still <laughs> on the up and up. Yeah. It just keeps getting what I call B and B, which is better and better. <laughs> Good, excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. B and B. I'm, I'm gonna use that one. B and B, better and better. I'm, <laughs> better I'm and gonna better, use that yeah. one. Um, well, we, we we doing something special tonight. Um, I do this. I'm, I might do it like every week. I have a different speaker come on, and we do like a Q and A with the people, and it's a good way for them. It's a different energy, and it's a good way to see what's on people's minds from around the world, and um, it allows them to communicate with the speaker. Sometimes these people don't get a chance to ever come to a lecture and ask uh, y'all questions directly. So mm -hmm. they, you know, by them coming on here, they can ask your questions directly. And you know, yes. it's, 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 you know, it's a good vibe. It's a good vibe. Yes. Uh, yes. So we go, yes. we definitely going to do the Q and a tonight family. Uh, just remember the rules of the show. When we do Q and a only one question, family, only one question. Uh, we have limited time and I want to get to uh, as many of y'all as possible to I mean, the back in the back, it'd be crowded. Like y'all be, I know y'all want to ask questions, so we're going to, uh, one question, respect the rules of the platform and be courteous to everybody else coming behind you. We're going to ask one question and we're going to keep it moving. Uh, Sister Myra will give you a brief answer to all your questions and we're going to have a great yes. time. Uh, one thing I want to say, Myra, before we start the Q&A, yes. I, um, I was actually, you know what, I, I actually was listening, I ended up getting a, a cassette recorder. And I was listening to my old reading that you did wow, for me. Remember wow. I showed you on the cassette? Yes, yeah, I was listening yes. to it. And I was just reminiscing and thinking about, you know, how important that was for me at that time. I remember Bobby Hammett used to say a couple of sisters was, was excellent readers in the community. And you were one of them. And he told me about, I think, two other sisters. He would just tell, not me personally, but he would just tell wow. the community about. And the woman back in, in, in that era, that golden age of consciousness, played such an important role in helping the people remember who they were in a system and their, and their life path. So yeah. I think this is important. And I think what you do is important. Everybody refers to you as the Oracle. Everybody yeah. refers to you as the Oracle. <laughs> what does it, so before we get, to, what, before we get to the Q and a, what do you define as the 2023 Oracle of this matrix that we live in? Is it, do you think the Oracle has different roles depending on the era that uh, we are in, like, how would you define being an oracle in this paradigm that we're currently in? Oh, yes. Um, a very uh, strategic question because, um, you know, it's something that, that builds, that builds, mm -hmm. 
You mm -hmm. know, I, my information doesn't change, but it does expand. Mm -hmm. And for each generation, each, um, you know, um, it seems to add another layer and another layer right. and another layer. And what I'm finding out now is that the information I was receiving, say, 20, 30 years ago, is only yes. now coming into fruition. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. at the time of fulfillment. So right. everything we've been, uh, all the readers, all the teachers, all the, you know, uh, what we've been giving for all this time is now at a point of culmination where we're getting did, validated for those things. Yes. Did you, did you ever have, was there like, just from your personal experience, did you ever um, develop doubt? Say if your message took 10 years to come into fruition or it took 10 years for people to be receptive to it. I'm just curious from your perspective, like, did you start to develop doubt uh, uh, throughout that time? Um, I, I think I, when I had the doubt was when I was first really getting into it, you know, uh -huh. um, and then the doubt was about, um, am I coming from, you know, spiritual messages or, you know, is this coming from, you know, my own opinion or my own idea? Right, right, right. So those right, are the right. things that I had to really learn how to separate, you see, when I was being inspired to give information, uh, versus, um, you know, um, well, I do include my own wisdom, you know, yeah. into mm -hmm. uh, the mix. So um, not much because um, I use tools to get mm -hmm. information. You know, mm -hmm. my forte is uh, reading symbolism. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's the spiritual language. I call myself an energy master. So <clears> I started <throat> studying energy, you know, in astrology, numerology, all the other tools you know, that's just what they were. They were just tools mm -hmm. uh, to define energy and the more. Uh, it's a system, you know, and there's mm -hmm. rules and there are laws to how energy unfolds. And that's what I got focused on. And that's what guided me so mm -hmm. that, you know, I was following the rules of energy. And that way I could be very secure about the information that I was putting out. But it's funny that um, you titled the Oracle because um, you know, my sons, you know, when the movie, the matrix come out and the Oracle, um, was uh, pulling some cookies out of the oven. And my sons would tell me how, uh, all their friends would call me the Oracle. And then one day <laughs> they walked in the house and I was pulling cookies out of the oven. <laughs> like, wow. and they, never, they never got over that. Their, their friends was really on them after that. So, um, but as I keep telling everybody, I'm, I read energy and, mm. you know, I'm a reporter for the cosmos. And sometimes, you know, people get um, maybe a little perturbed by some of the information I put out, but mm. I have to constantly remind them it's, it's not me. You know, all I am mm. is reporting, you know, from a system of studying energy. So that's why I call mm. myself a reporter for the cosmos and the information is not, mine it's not my responsibility uh but mm. where i do take responsibility is uh being able to interpret uh symbolism which is the spiritual language and and that's how i'm able to you know give out the information mm. that i do you see so definitely i i'm, I'm still in amazement and how accurate your reading was this is 2005 <laughs> like i'm still in amazement like you're definitely hands down one of the best. So I'm glad that the people are receptive at this point and supporting. Somebody actually asked, um, how can they get a reading? Um, could you tell them before we get started? How if they're uh, interested? Yes, the only way to get a reading from me at this point is through my website, uh, which is sistermyra.com. And um, you know, so uh, like I'm on Spotify and and they'll do all the I don't do anything with the scheduling. All I do is get the names you know, mm -hmm. for what date the consultation is. So just go on the website, sistermyra.com. And, um, you know, for consultations, I also have the book there um, and the classes, but um, I'm still, I uh, haven't started the classes back up yet. So uh, okay. those are the things that are there and available uh, on the website. So that's it. Excellent. 
Excellent. All right. Let's get started with the Q&A from the people all over the world. Love to hear uh, the global views of people all over the world. Uh, just remember, family, one question and we're going to keep it moving. She'll give you a brief answer. and We're going to keep it moving. Um, yes. Also, the, the link is pinned at the top of the uh, chat. So if you're interested in um, asking a question, the link is pinned at the at the top of the chat, family. All right, shout out to everybody who just came in the room. We were Sister Myra Moss, and let's get to um, the first first caller. My brother Hey Ru was here first. Hey Ru, what's up, brother? Hey Ru, you there? Yo, Hey Ru. I Peace. see him. We can't hear you, my brother. We we can't we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Yo, you there now? Nah, I still can't hear you. Um, I'm gonna get to the next call. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you in the back, and I'm gonna get to the next person, and um, I'll come right back to you. All right, let's get to uh the next caller, Ryan four one one. Hi, my bad. Oh, um, <laughs> so good. So good. How you, how you so, doing? Greetings. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, so greetings. good. Um, I'm Capricorn Moon Leo rising, and I was wondering if you had some wisdom for somebody with a lot of um cardinal placements because we're always oh, like yeah. starting something, but it's kind of hard to stay on one thing when you like see other things. So, have yes. any wisdom for that? Okay, and you said you had what sun? I, I heard a Capricorn moon and a Leo Aries. rising. Aries. Aries sun. Oh, yes, sun. my favorite energy. <laughs> <laughs> now that's um, because uh, I have Aries rising, I have Aries Jupiter, and then what I call my signature energy. And that's funny because um, that's just how you figure your, um, your signature energy. That means I have more cardinal signs than any other mode and I have more fire element and the cardinal fire sign of the zodiac is Aries so that's what gives me an Aries signature you see so that's quite a combination uh I have like 10 cardinal signs <laughs> wow. Wow. you know one fixed sign in my chart and maybe maybe three mutables so um I do have a dominant of cardinals and uh, the Cardinal Cross, that is when we're dealing with the royal energy. Um, those are the royal signs. There's three cross levels that we're being influenced from. Uh, we have the Cardinals, which is Aries opposite Leo, and Cancer opposite Capricorn. And these are the ones that initiate and activates a new level of royal energy from the universe. We have all the signs in us, but your sun sign is what you came in here to focus through. So you came here to focus through the Cardinal Cross, which is a leader, a pioneer, uh, the Anubises of the Zodiac. And for the feminine, they called it an Anubis. So being on that Cardinal Cross, uh, what is, you said your rising sign is Leo. So yes, overall, you have a fixed cross. Your sun sign puts you on the Cardinal Cross. Um, and then you're dominant of other planets in cardinal signs. But um, uh, overall, you're on a fixed cross with a Leo rising. And the fixed cross is the one that sets that energy into motion. You know, what the cardinal cross activates, the fixed cross will, will reverse the energy and set that into motion. And that's Taurus opposite Scorpio and Leo opposite uh, Aquarius. So there's a combination going on here. So you are in your energy, we're talking energy vibration, um, mm -hmm. you activate and initiate, especially as Aries, because that's the first cardinal sign. That is the prince of the royal family, the cardinal fire. The, the fire always deal with the sun. So the cardinal fire is the prince. The cardinal wa water is the queen, uh, which is cancer. The cardinal air is the king, which is Libra, and the cardinal earth is the princess, which is Capricorn. So you're the first cardinal sign, the ultimate or the quintessential pioneer 
or Ananubis, which is the feminine version of Anubis, the opener of the way that helps lead the way. And as a warrior, Aries leads, rules over Aries, Taurus, and Gemini before we get to the next cardinal sign of Cancer. So that's the first quarter that Aries rules that domain, the warrior. The, uh, the first three signs on the physical half of the astrological cycle. So that's when the warfare uh, is manifested at the physical level uh, through Aries. Uh, the um, planetary ruler of Aries is Mars. So that's Haru's energy. Aries is the most personal sign of the zodiac. So uh, that means they come to their full 306 degrees of personal power as Haru. That's who they pattern their heroes after. So very strategic energy. It wow, starts man. the whole gamut. Yeah. You see. Excellent. So, damn. Yes. Since, since you don't got a whole reading out of Myra. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you just snuck around. I'm trying to put as much in succinctly, uh, but she wow. tapped my favorite energy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Myra got happy when you asked that question, sis. Myra oh, got yeah. happy. Aries energy. Aries her energy. eyes lit up. Yeah, her eyes lit up. <laughs> hey, hey, thank, thank you for calling. I, I appreciate the call. Thank you. All right, peace. <laughs> Yeah, Myra, you lit up when she asked that question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, I love Miss Mary. Yeah, you was resonating <laughs> with this energy. Definitely resonate. Yes. Let's get to yes. the, um, we're going to get to the next one. Let's see uh, who we got down here. Let's get to <coughs> Demarius. That's your name, brother? Uh, Demarius. Demarius. How you doing, brother? You got a question uh, for Sister Myra? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first, thank you for taking my, my call. Uh, good evening, mm -hmm. uh, Brother Rich, Sister Myra. Um, I received a cosmic reading from Isis Wisdom around yes. October. Yes, and she told me that my uh, soul comes from Andromeda, the Andromeda galaxy. Um, what can you tell us about Andromeda, their history of planet Earth and the uh, human race and their role in our planet's ascension? Okay. Um, I'm not that familiar with the Andromeda. Give me a little more, give me a little, a little more information on it. Well, I was told that um, that I am a part of the Royal Andromedan God Council, um, okay. an Andromedan commander. Um, okay. They are a part of the Galactic Federation. I'm still doing okay. research on myself. Um, is there anything at all that you could tell us? That that's all. Okay. And and what is your what is your sun sign? Taurus. Taurus. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. So. Um, what I'm getting is almost like um, uh, part of a higher uh, hierarchy when it comes to your energy being part of like a spiritual council, you see, uh, that helps, um, you know, um, dictate the rules of how spiritual energy will unfold, like you said, for the earth. And that's what I do. I read those configurations of how energy unfolds on the earth. Um, Taurus, the sign of values. So um, you bringing something of value to the table at the higher spiritual hierarchy uh, that's going to be helpful in influencing uh, the evolution of daughter earth. You know, I say daughter earth, not mother earth. It's mama universe and daughter earth. So your energy vibration, there's some of us who fell from the highest levels of the universe to the lowest. And, um, you know, in transformation, that means it's now time to come back full circle to the highest again. So what that gives me is that you came from a very ancient level of the universe uh, at the top of the hierarchy, uh, spiritual hierarchy and energizing uh, through your focus. Your sun sign is always your focus. So energizing what is a value when it comes to the rules, the regulations of how energy is unfolding for daughter earth and activating the evolution. Uh, daughter earth is uh, stepping up as a star system, you see. So you're part of the energy that's helping to orchestrate that. You see, so that's the best I can get. I'd have to do more research, you know, on that term, you know, to really put any more information together. But 
from what I gather from what you say, I'm just saying that you fell from a very high level, uh, top of the hierarchy, um, available to contribute what is the value for Daughter Earth's evolution uh, to the higher uh, spiritual influence of fulfillment at this time. That's it's about as best I can give you, you know, until I look more into the Andromeda energy. Yes, that's Indeed. very helpful. Um, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. You know, your opposite sign is Scorpio. So I don't talk about one sign without the opposite because I call myself a holistic. So putting both halves together, that means your spiritual energy will be, will be Taurus. I mean, excuse me. even six axes of Hello? energy now. So um, Taurus being the sign of values and Scorpio being the sign of transformation. So you are very valuable in guiding from the universe. Your energy is to how we have to now transform in our values in order to evolve as the new rulers for the new Aquarian age. That is the fixed cross that you're on. And that's the role of the fixed cross, to reverse the energy out of the mundane physical illusion of power to a spiritual, creative, and royal empowerment. And in order to do that, in order to evolve as the new rulers, uh, the horizontal leg of the fixed cross is Taurus and Scorpio, which means a transformation of values in order to evolve Aquarius as new age rulers. And that's what you're participating in from a holistic perspective in the universe. That's excellent. That's very helpful. Wonderful. Thank wonderful. you. You're so welcome. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, Rich. You see, I'm trying to be succinct, Mar brother Rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can what, go on, it, on and was on. It, was mm -hmm. um the reception messing up on your end? No. Did you see? Was I was okay? It meant, yeah, I think something exactly. with my bandwidth. This happened the other night when I did a, a show with Rod Hayes. I think um I gotta call my company or something. I think it's something with the bandwidth. It was like acting up just now. So hopefully we okay. can get through the whole show smoothly. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah but on I, my end, yeah. <laughs> oh, but, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. But um, oh, I think the brother. Okay, yeah, the brother. Hey, brother. Yeah, I appreciate the call, my brother. You got disconnected, but I appreciate the call. All right. No, yeah. No problem. Thank you for having me on. All right, all right brother. All right, peace. Yeah. Uh, all right, y'all. Oh, it's freezing on your end. How can you know I mine always do that? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I know. Sometime you be having, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine always do that, just a little bit, not too much, though. Shout out to um, uh, to Chena Arnold. You know the sister who played Pam or Martin, uh, Sister Myra. Yes. Yeah, she a big time yes. supporter. She a big time supporter. Wonderful. Big time, yeah. That's yeah, she be showing. Great. She show. She show a lot of love, a lot of support, and I definitely appreciate. It. So I want to give her a big shout out. Uh, famously Wonderful. black. Wonderful. You know, that's how that. I connected with uh, um, uh, Brother Fred White uh, through your show. He saw me on your oh. show, and that's how he contacted me. And he always used to say, Sister Meyer, you don't know who's watching you, you know, because that's how he uh, connected. But that was when, way back, you know, when I did the yeah. astrological destiny with, for the Black race. So that's Excellent. where he, that's what he saw and contacted me from there. <clears throat> excellent excellent all right yeah shout out to everybody watching known and unknown i appreciate all the support your attention and, and everything that y'all do for this channel definitely appreciate it let's get to the next question i mean the next caller uh once again if you're coming in late because we got over two thousand people in the chat now if you're coming in late we're doing a live q a with sister myra the chat might be full in the back if it's full you could just keep trying and you know you'll, you'll eventually get in but um Remember, family, one question, Myra's going to answer it, and then we're going to keep it moving. But um, enjoying this definitely so far tonight. Let's get to the next caller. Uh, Os uh, what's your name, Osama brother? King. What's your Osama, Osama King. King. Okay. It's my rap name. Oh. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, brother. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I, I, All right. What, what's, your, what's your question? I say namaste to both of you. Um, My question is, I was watching you, uh, your your old video with you and Sister Myra, uh, the 222 video about spirit yes. and intuition and, know, and knowing thyself. 
uh, yes. I'm in a shelter right now, and it's not making sense. So, what what what's your uh, your answer on spirit and intuition? Spirit intuition. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Did, did you hear and, the whole question? You heard the whole question, Myra? Well, I heard him say he was in a shelter, and then okay. you said, uh, uh, opinion, "What is yeah. uh, your yeah. opinion on on, on intuition?" Yeah. Yeah, from the shelter to the intuition. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. What I can say about um, being in the shelter right now um, is the fact that um, we're now we're trying to transition. Your spirit is trying to transition you from your material power to your spiritual power. I always say the mama bird is now trying to push the baby birds out of the uh, proverbial material nest so they can find out they have been liberated, that they can fly. They no longer have the yoke of materialism keeping them grounded in the physical illusion. Uh, you can serve, not serve two masters, okay? So the thing is, those that are being pushed out of that material nest now are the ones discovering their wings, their spiritual wings, so that by the time this crashes overall, you don't have to look back. You don't even have to flinch. You've already discovered how to open up to uh, your spiritual power. I always like to tell the story of my, um, you know, one of my relatives um, in, uh, was going into surgery. And I was living way across the country. I was living way in Atlanta. And my family's in Nebraska. And when I found out about it, uh, I didn't have the money to go fly over there and be with them. So I had to send my spirit. I sent my spirit for their healing and for them to feel my presence. And the next day I was told that it worked magnificently. By the time the doctor got up in there, everything had seemingly corrected itself. I keep telling people, if I had had money, I'd have flew over there, been sitting at his side, not really helped him. Like, I helped him by sending my spirit. So we're learning how to liberate ourselves from our dependency uh, on our material power so that we can transition to that spiritual uh, empowerment. And that's usually by guidance from your spirit. Your spirit is positioning you um, because I'm telling you, uh, the money doesn't have much longer to be of value. Even in the Bible, they say, uh, in the last days, and we're definitely in the last days, they're going to be throwing money in the yeah. streets because it has no value. But that's for us to learn how to liberate ourselves and step up to our spiritual power, uh, independent of, you know, dependency on the material power. It's time for us to transition to practicing our spiritual powers, you see. Um, at least not more dependency on the material than you are on your spiritual powers. So learning how, uh, when I moved to North Carolina, that's where I got my lessons in, in depending mm -hmm. on spiritual empowerment, you see. So you're on the verge of a crossover okay. from learning how to depend on that, um, that, that spiritual power versus your material one. And um, let me see, I'm trying to put that in context to uh, the intuition you're talking about, but uh, you seem I'm you a seem Capricorn. To be, oh, okay. Very sensitive. That's the most sensitive sign <laughs> of the zodiac. Uh, we are the last cardinal sign, and we are um, the uh, ultimate receiver. Receiver. Uh, Libra, the cardinal air, is the ultimate transmitter. Capricorn is the ultimate receiver. That's because we are the most sensitive sign of the zodiac, and we're very sensitive to spiritual energy. So whatever you're going through right now, especially on the material tip, it seems that it doesn't have you low-key. It doesn't have you bothered. It doesn't look yeah. like that from yeah. what I'm looking at. So your intuition from your spirit is telling you that this is not anything, this is a phase of how you're transitioning uh, to a new level. Okay. Uh, and uh, the old has to go in order for the new to blossom. So any dependency on material yeah. power um, is now being transitioned to you opening up and discovering your spiritual powers. That's what I get. Hey, I, I appreciate yeah. the call, my brother. <laughs> 
Can Thank you hear you. me? Wonderful. Ashe, namaste. Peace, brother. Wonderful. Peace. Yeah. All right, all right. Why well, are you giving some wonderful answers for these for the family? <laughs> I nice. love questions. I thrive on questions. Yeah. I, I know they're definitely enjoying this. Let's get to the next. <laughs> let's get to the next caller. Uh, Shirley White. Can you hear me, Shirley White? Yes, I can hear you. Peace, 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 Shirley. Peace, peace to you. All right. I have a question. Um, yes. For the, I'm Aquarius, and I was trying to figure out what Aquarius energy right now should be doing at this moment. I know they were talking about, I think it's like the Pluto retrograde that's going on. So if you can give me a Okay, in Aquarius, yes. Yes. Um, Aquarius, again, we're going back to the fixed cross. As a matter of fact, Aquarius is one of the, the most dominant energy influence going on right now because we did enter the Aquarius age in 2013. So, um, that's, as I was saying earlier, uh, Aquarius, the sign of evolution, and its opposite sign is Leo. So an evolution of a new age rulership. And in order to evolve as the new age rulers, there has to be a transformation of values. It's time for, uh, the key to everything is balance. So it's time for the ancient rulers to pass the new age rulers, the baton, so that we can evolve Aquarius out of an abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment. And the Aquarius energy is the main focus of how this energy is being reversed for our evolution. That means each lifetime we balance on enough levels until we get to the Aquarius age, then that's the point of evolution. It's also the sign of I know. It's the last air sign. So it has the highest outreach to spiritual knowledge and spiritual uh, information. Aquarius, they call it the water bearer, uh, even though it's an air sign. And the reason they call it the water bearer, because it brings the hidden waters mm. of the Pisces, the subconscious, and brings it to the conscious mind or exposes it to the conscious mind as revelation. You see, so from the subconscious, which is where our true powers come from, and the revelation of what's hidden subconsciously is exposed to the conscious mind through Aquarius. That's why it's the sign of I know. It has the highest knowing or outreach to spiritual knowledge. So the opposite sign, Leo, I know I am a creative ruler. In order to activate that rulership, that's that Aquarius and Leo axis of energy. So your spiritual energy will be Leo. So you will be, I know I am a creative ruler in order to activate that rulership. This is the energy I use to say, um, I'm hammer time. You can't touch this because mm -hmm. I know the source <laughs> of my power. You know what I'm saying? And once you yeah. know the source of your power, it's not enough just to know anymore. Now you have to walk in that knowing. It's the difference in knowing and walking in the knowing. That means stepping up in the security of your power um, to a new rulership, you see. We got to come out of a victim type mentality and think of ourselves as evolution, uh, evolving as the new rulers for the new Aquarian age. That's what's setting the tone for everything right now. Mm. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. So hey, much. Shirley. Thank, 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 thank you for the uh, thank you for the call, Shirley. Thank you, Rich. You have a good one. Peace, peace. Okay. All right. Peace, peace. All right, man. Wow, what a show. They they loving it in the chat, Myra. They, <laughs> wonderful. They loving. They loving it. Uh, wonderful. Thanks everybody in chat. Thanks, Mad Titan, for the super chat. I appreciate it, my brother. And uh, Sha Kim. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate it, Sha Kim. Um, let's get to the next call. Let's get to the next call. Let's keep it going. Jay Ben's delight. You call here before, <laughs> Yo, my brother. Yes, sir. Greetings. What's Greetings. up, brother? What's up, sister? All right. All right. All right. Blessings, blessings. All right. So, all right. So, I have my birth chart pulled up right here just in case or whatever. But my question for you, sister Myra, is um, uh, when it comes to business and like, uh, enterprising and finance, just finances for myself, but really like business, starting that up and just anything else that comes to your mind 
that's important uh according to my astrological energy uh what mm -hmm. can you tell me um i'm a leo sun cancer moon pisces rising uh virgo north node wow you're um, all over the place here <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah, but you said, um you said a leo sun yeah leo sun cancer moon pisces okay. rising Okay, so I'm seeing water and fire here. You know, when you, the highest level is the elements, you see, that's how you can gauge what's really going on is taking it to an elemental level. There's no higher than the four elements. Every deity, every God, every archetype is going to fall under one of those four elements. That's mother, father, son, and daughter. Those are what the four elements represent. The fire is the sun, the water is the mama, the air is the father, and the earth is the daughter. And you're you're demonstrating all of those uh, energies. Those are the four pistons in the engine that has to be harmonizing in order to generate the power. So it sounds like to me you are you know you have all of those four components um, harmonizing. You don't blend energy. You harmonize energy. So you are harmonizing that energy by I heard more water, you know, than fire, the Leo sun, and then the uh was cancer moon. Was it cancer moon? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what does water and fire do to one another? You see, if they're not balanced, that's the key to everything balance. If you have more water than fire, the water will put out the fire or your emotions will tamper with your uh, actions. Fire is actions, what you will do. Um, if there's more fire than water, then the fire will evaporate the water uh, or what you're feeling. So uh, the task is, since I'm hearing all elements so far, I think the only one I didn't hear was air. I didn't hear the air element. I mean, well, I have a lot of, I have Aquarius in my Jupiter and, and Uranus. Okay. okay, okay. So I'm hearing all four of those components, and it's just yeah. about being able to balance, you know, and harmonize between those four, you know, and um, air and, and fire works well together, and earth and water works well together. But the key to everything is balance. So as you can harmonize and balance those energies, that is how you step up to a holistic level. Anytime we complete a spiral, which means including all four of those components, you complete a spiral. That is what gives you access to the next level where you start a new, vibra a higher vibration at a new cycle, only for access to the next and the next and the next. This is an infinite process of transformation, regeneration, and evolution of spiritual rulership. And you got all four pistons working to get keep you evolving to the next level. Um, you know, and um, so uh, it sounds like you're well-rounded in your energy, and that is the basis and the key for everything. But make sure when you got that fire and water, make sure if you're too, um, if you're too, active, you may need, you know, to bring in some of your air, or if you're too emotional, which is where I see a lot of water going on, then it's time to bring in your earth, you know, and, and anchor that. So learn how to balance between those elements. And if you're seeing the air is how you think, it's mental, the water is your feelings, your fire is your passions, and then the earth is your sensitivity. So if you see too much going on in any one of those areas, then you bring in the opposite element, air and fire, earth and water, to balance it out. The key to everything is balance. Nothing's inherently bad. It's being off balance that causes friction. Okay? Indeed. Uh, hey, I appreciate that. Wonderful. Thanks for the call. Love Thanks that. for the call, my brother. All right, peace, <laughs> peace. All right, let's keep it going, family. Let's get to the next call. Is this Al or AI? Al, Al. Al, Al what's happening, my brother? You got a question? Yeah, I got a quick question. Uh, tell me a little bit about cuss signs. I'm a Gemini. Well, I'm birth. My born. My birthday is May twenty third. So I'm looking up that I'm a Taurus Gemini. I don't really see too much about people 
talking about that. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because you're going to be one or the other. Okay. And they say when you're, when any planet was in, which is within two degrees of any other planet, you throw out the book at that point, And then you have to determine, you know, what suits you. And just like I was talking about those elementals with the last question, that goes straight to the heart of elementals. Because when I have a person on the cups and they're not too clear about which is which, that's when we go to the elemental level. So you're saying Taurus and Gemini. So now we're going to look at Taurus as an earth sign. And now and we're talking your sun sign. Your sun sign is your focus, your personality. So in your personality, are you more grounded as the earth or Taurus? Or if you, Gemini, are you more cerebral? Now, I know you have all the influence in you, but when it comes to your sun sign, your focus, and your personality, you have to determine if you feel the earth more or if you feel the air more. Which do you think? I would, th I would say the, the air. I'm always in my head. <laughs> That's the Gemini. So claim the Gemini, okay? Uh, Gemini. You're not going to be both. You're um, going to be one or the other. And looking at the elements is how you help determine what fits you best. So if you immediately said the air, the cerebral, staying in your head, that's Gemini energy. It's the first air sign, uh, mutable air, um, and it's the sign of discernment. Always discerning between spiritual reality versus the physical illusion. When we see the metaphysical movies, you'll see the warrior, Aries, trying to get through that twin tower. Which That's is my attendant, too. Yeah. Uh, which Aries? Yeah. Oh, my. So, yeah. The warrior. And you're, uh, you're uh, trying to get through that Gemini gateway, those twin towers. And if they don't go through the twin towers in full discernment of what's real spiritually and what's false in the illusion, you'll see a beam of light come down and strike them down. You'll see all these bones around that Gemini gateway because you have to get through that gateway in discernment and understanding the illusion versus reality because the next energy after Gemini is cancer the next cardinal sign the queen the mama and she's very that's Kali Ma energy cancer so she's very ferocious you're not going to get to cancer um polluted in false values else you know you'll have a tough time with mama because the next energy after cancer is Leo that's where you gain your power so you have to get through mama the queen you know, through that Gemini gateway to Mama the Queen before you can access Leo and gain your power. So discernment is your key. And Gemini is the master channeler. You channel. You're the master channel. what? Channeler. Channel. Mm -hmm. Like you channel information from the universe, you see. That's not um, coincidental. It's not um, your imagination, but you are a master when it comes to channeling information from high. Yeah, level. everybody. Yeah, I, I, everybody called me like a jack of all trades. Like I do, I know how to do everything, and I help yeah. a lot of people with a lot of things. Like, yeah. but yes. I'm, I just be feeling You're like aware. I'm different. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's that that. Uh, I always hear that from you know the chosen ones that I feel different. You see, um, than the rest of my family. You know. Um, like I said, there was 144,000 generational families that fell from the highest to the lowest. And now mm -hmm. it's time to regenerate them back to the highest again. So, um, you you know, you came here with a royal purpose um, at a level where um, you're here to lead and help guide, um, you know, people to the other side. So you will feel different. You'll feel, you know, out of the box from what most people feel, you see. Mm, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, yes. I, I, I appreciate the call, my brother. Definitely appreciate the call. Wonderful. All right. All right, peace, brother. So welcome. All right, let's get to... Al, I'm going to have to make room. Okay, he hung up, yeah. I got to make room in the back for people calling. Uh, Let's get to the next caller. 
Nazir. May infinite healing and wellness be upon you all. Nazir McCullers, my art, also known as KS3 Revolutionary. So Capricorn rising, Virgo sun, Scorpio moon, September 17th. So I'm curious, right? Like, now I'm one, one of one, one question, brother. You sound like you long winded. One question, brother. One I question. Got you. So right. I'm curious. I'm my main focus like lately has been like really exactly what's my purpose here? Because I just started on my podcast and everything. I'm always just making sure I can be the best example I can be around. Always have been assisting anybody and everybody I can come across. But like at the end of the day, I'm still looking like, OK, what am I here for? So that's like really what my main question is. How can I actually solidify that into myself? Okay. And you said uh, Capricorn rising, Virgo. Sun. Moon. Virgo sun. So, September and 17th. Sun and, and, and Pisces rising, right? Capricorn rising, Virgo sun, and Scorpio moon. September Scorpio 17th moon. is my birthday. Okay. okay. Now, see, you've got, you got those opposites going on, Virgo and Pisces. That's holistic, you see. That's balance. That's the key to everything. Virgo is the sign of cleansing and purification when it comes to false value. That is why they're so meticulous when it comes to details. They can leave no stone unturned as they hunt out all impurities to cleanse and purge of those impurities in order for us to heal in our wisdom and it being the last sign ascending above the horizon line into the spiritual in your energy vibration through Libra, where you can now get into a balanced partnership with your own spirit, come to your individual wholeness. Balancing that with Pisces, Pisces is the sign of the subconscious, you know, the entrance into our ancient memory and our acoustic records. So my, Pisces, excuse me for one minute, my, my rising is Capricorn. You're, yes, but you did that. You do have Virgo Pisces going on as well, right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Yes, ma'am. Virgo you. and your Pisces energy, because they are opposites and they balance one another. You see, as you cleanse of false values, that's going to give you access to your Pisces or your subconscious or your Akashic or ancient records. And then uh, the Capricorn is how you take action. Your rising is how you what you do and the actions you take. And it represents your higher self. So taking actions uh, as a leader of leaders. Capricorn is the last cardinal sign. And your your rising sign represents your higher self. So you're at a higher level. You're vibrating like a Capricorn. That's the last earth sign. That's the last cardinal sign. It has a very significant role, you know, and especially with your Pisces and your Virgo as you're cleansing and purifying of false values. See, the first earth sign, Taurus, is we, where we go internal and cleanse of false values to the matrix. Then that leads you to the second earth sign, Virgo, after you go internal and define within your own value and self-worth. That's what you're searching for, your own value and self-worth and the purpose you came here to serve and contribution to a larger universal purpose. Well, you discover that through Taurus, where you go internal and define that from within yourself. And then that leads you to Virgo, where you cleanse and purify the false values to the matrix. And then the last earth sign, Capricorn, is where you step up as a high priest, you know, in Capricorn, uh, the last cardinal sign, the last earth sign, representing daughter earth, which is where you take actions when it comes to integrity and character. You see, and Saturn is the planetary ruler of Capricorn. So the actions you take will be uh, definitely looked at very seriously by Saturn energy, the taskmaster. So you won't be allowed to abuse your actions because the minute you try to abuse your actions, then Saturn, the planetary ruler of Capricorn, will immediately chastise you, you see. So running up that mountain, sure foot and steady as the mountain go, while others are running up, but by the time Capricorn gets to the top, and I'm talking about that because that's the actions you take as your rising sign, as you get to the top of that 
mountain, others are falling down and you've built a proper foundation to be up there for good. But one of the most strategic signs of the Zodiac and your Virgo Pisces is how you're cleansing, accessing your powers through the subconscious or your ancient memory, and then taking action, you know, of integrity and character, which is the highest peak of the astrological cycle. So uh, continue to go internal and your spirit, balance with your spirit. And it is the one that's going to give you those answers that you're looking for when it comes to defining your purpose. You see, you're young. You look young. So 18 um, years young. Oh, my gosh. Yes, you are young. So um, don't uh, don't worry. Your spirit is got your back and is going to give you all the answers you need. But start focusing on your spirit. Stop looking everywhere else for information. Uh, Capricorn is also the sign of I utilize. So once you're cleansing and you're on, you know where you're going, you know the path you're on, um, then uh, it's time to utilize what you know. Okay. Start yes. walking in what you know. So yes. those are the energies that's coming together to give you some clarity about, you know, what your purpose is. Same. Indeed, and, and, and you special, brother. You got the same birthday as me, September seventeenth. Oh, yes, you got the same birthday. Yeah, very much so. I definitely greatly appreciate it. Willing to continue, you all continue to enjoy every single second of you now. Episode five of Conversations with the Highly Connected and Protected, my podcast, is actually going to be live Whoa. later tonight. So. Definitely greatly appreciate you all. Will and intend whoever is interested can tap in, give some insight on how you feel about it. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, you, Thank have you, the you do it, you do have the gift I, of gab. You can talk. I, I see, I seen I seen that in the first five seconds. I said, Oh, yes. this nigga to for that. I said, Oh shit, he's one of them. <laughs> yeah. Hey, good, hey, good luck to you with your podcast, brother. Um, everybody go support this young brother. Do your thing, man. Thanks for calling in, my brother. Most definitely you as well, Ashe. All right, all right, Ashe. All right, all right. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let's uh get to let's get to some sisters in here. Uh, sun God is. <laughs> I, caught, I, I caught you hey, drinking you the water. Right. <laughs> um, but no, like yeah, he really did that. I really like the promotion and that he did. But anyways, you guys, thank y'all for having me. I seen it coming. I seen it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I seen it oh, coming. Goodness. All right, you guys. So I have a question, Sister Mara. I actually got a reading from yeah. you like in 2020 during COVID and stuff like that. But I actually was yeah. when I was getting your reading. It was a good reading though, from what I remember. Yes. But ever since then, I've been doing my spiritual work, you guys, right? I've been doing my spiritual work, been getting up at three o'clock in the morning, been meditating, been looking yes. at my birth chart, been studying, right? Yes. So I'm a Scorpio Sun, Leo Moon, and Scorpio Rising. And I'm a life path 33. Wait, why are you in that face? All that fixed energy. <laughs> wow. Yes. That's a lot of fixed energy. And it's Scorpio. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, that's what I call uh, the four horses of the apocalypse. You know, the four fixed signs of the Zodiac. They're the ones that reverses the energy out of the mundane physical illusion of power to spiritual, creative, and royal empowerment. So um, very tough, you know, um, <laughs> especially with that Scorpio. You know, Scorpio is the sign of intensity, no middle ground, okay? Right. So they're the sign of extremes, water, so that means emotional extremes. Uh -huh. So being able to balance that with your Taurus, that's the opposite sign. That would be your spiritual energy. So when you see yourself getting to, the only thing about Scorpio going to extremes, if they go down a path and realize that it's, you know, not the right one, they've yeah. already caused a lot of devastation on the way. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so um, but the sign of transformation when it comes to values, when you put that with Taurus energy in order for there to be an evolution, Aquarius and, and uh, as a for a new age rulership, you see. Uh, but um, like I said, very focused. Uh, Scorpio is the sign of bonding. You, you get in balance and partnership with your spirit through Libra. And then that leads you to the next energy of Scorpio, where you bond, 
in Scorpio. And this is how you activate the transformation. Scorpio is the sign of transformation, which means the death of the old for a rebirth of the new at a higher level. The old has to go in order for the new to blossom. The Mayans call it the great crossover or the celestial ship of the north, where it crosses you over uh, from um, your uh, Libra Scorpio bonding activate the transformation and then crosses you over to Sagittarius, yeah. the great creative place where you access the abundance of your power. So a uh, very strategic energy right now because we're in the throes of transformation, regeneration. The planetary ruler Pluto is the planet of regeneration. And, um, and we're saying that's in Aquarius right now. So that means an explosive, sudden, unexpected, long-range changes mm -hmm. is what you can look forward to yeah, as to what is now ready to culminate in your energy. But it's for you to transform values and habits. We can't be Lot's wife. We can't take old values and habits, uh, issues of the past, looking back and holding on to issues of the past when gateways are opening ahead of you to evolve you to a new level. So ready to step up, activate a transformation and step into your full empowerment. That's where you're at in the cycle of energy through that well, sun cycle. I'm supposed to basically empower people, right? Or no, through that Leo. Yeah, energy. we call Scorpio, uh, like, it, um, like I say, a good occupation for Scorpio is like a drug counselor. You know, because Scorpios are transformers. They tear down people's old lives and help them rebuild at a higher level. So like a drug counselor that helps tear down the old life of drug addiction and then rebuild them, you know, uh, to a higher level. That is Scorpio's role, transforming habits and transforming values in order for us to step up to the next level. So yes, absolutely. You are a transformer. Because like hey, on my platform, uh, oh, sorry. Sis, we got we got to get to the next call. I really do. I appreciate the call, though. Sorry, sorry. guys. All right, thanks for the call, sis. Get appreciate another it. reading, honey, and we can mm -hmm. really dig in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. All right. All right. All right. Peace, peace, <laughs> peace, sis. All right, let's get to the next caller. This brother been here for a while. Black Ice, Black Ice, peace, brother. Are peace, 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 peace. Appreciation, yeah. gratitude to you both. 21472. Yes. My question to you, Sister Myra, is what is the male Aquarius role in the age of divine feminine? Is it different than the female Aquarius or we got the same thing? Or yeah, what is our role? You know, question, I, find the most, I find the most definition between male and female through the Aquarius energy for some reason. <clears throat> they do show more of a difference than most signs when it comes to male and female. You said February the 14th? Correct. That's my son's birthday. And you guys kind of favor too. You kind of favor. You know, you Thank you. My, my son is February, uh, February the 14th as well. All my grandchildren are Aquarius, you know, uh, and my uh, oldest brother is Aquarius. I'm surrounded by the Aquariuses. But you guys are, I do call you the cocky ones, <laughs> you know, because you do have the highest outreach to spiritual knowledge. So you're superior in what you know. And you know that. And sometimes, you know, you can be very hard headed, especially a fixed sign. You know, it takes hell and high water, you know, to move a fixed sign. And then you're the fixed air, which means you get an idea, you get something fixed in your mind and, you know, and very diligent. Uh, uh, about sticking to it. Um, but um, the arrogance, it is, they, they can be arrogant. <laughs> and um, it, it shows different ways between the female and the male. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, feeling that superiority when it comes to how you think, because you have the highest outreach to spiritual knowledge. You know a lot, you know, but uh, sometimes you have to balance that with your Leo, you know, and, um, you know, kind of, uh, um, kind of humble yourself, you see. So, uh, because as much as you know, this is a infinite process 
of transformation and regeneration. So no matter what level you're at and how much you know, it's always going to be time to step up to the next level. So um, expand on that knowing. Um, anytime we get set in one position, which is what Aquarius might be prone to do, you know, that's when we're stagnated, you see. When we're just, oh, this is the only thing I do, or this is the only thing, this is the only way it is. You have to be flexible enough to follow your spirit from one end to the opposite end, you see. Mm. So balance is the key to everything. Don't ever get into one position, which you could do when it comes to your superiority, spirit, superiority when it comes to what you know, you know, but uh, um, Aquarius, um, sudden and abrupt, unexpected changes, which means that when the uh, system and the powers that be have become stagnated and corrupted, it is the Aquarius energy that will disrupt that status quo, you know, uh, sudden abrupt changes, unexpected and explosive changes uh, for our evolution. That's why we always evolve in the Aquarian age, because that means everything has gotten so stale, corrupted, uh, that it has to um, blow up. It has to, um, you know, um, uh, like I said, sudden unexpected and explosive changes. Uh, Uranus, planetary ruler. So sudden mm -hmm. explosive changes uh, for evolution to a new level. So mm. that is the main gist of your energy, you see. And the opposite Leo, you know, the evolution as a new ruler, but you got to know that. And now it's not enough just to know it. You got to walk in that knowing. So your sun sign being an Aquarius, that's going to affect you more personally than everybody else, knowing your power in order to step up to your power. That is mm, your main that was thorough. Yes. That was thorough. Mm -hmm. Black guy, so I, I appreciate Gratitude. the call, my brother. Indeed. Yes. Take care, oh, my brother. You. All right. Yeah. Bye, peace, peace. All right. All right. Ooh, Sister Myrtle is thorough tonight. <laughs> No, wow. y'all don't know what y'all getting, man. Like this is, <laughs> this, this, this is like, you know, it's like you know how they say you pay. They tell people, um, people talking about paying to have a conversation with Jay Z and to go out with dinner with him. Like, yo, this is like the best that what she does, and she's just taking calls randomly. You don't get this yeah, a lot yeah. from people on Sister Myra's level. So I appreciate you for for even doing this, Sister Myra, for real. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. My family. And, indeed. Uh, for those who are still asking about being in the chat, the link is pinned at the top. If you are still interested in um coming on the chat, I would say we got about uh we got about 40 minutes left. You cool for 40 more minutes, Sister Myra? Oh yes, yes. Okay, okay. So yeah, we probably got about 40 more minutes left. Uh kick it with y'all. Make sure you hit the like button, make sure you share, but it's very important to hit the like button, family, get the algorithm. It gets the algorithm popping. So if you're enjoying this broadcast, make sure you hit the like button, family. And um, also, before we continue, Sister Myra, yes. let me put your cash app up here. Um, give me one second, y'all. Okay. Myra. Now, I forgot it. What is it again? It's Sister a dollar Myra? sign. Mm -hmm. Uh dollar sign Myra Moss without the H you know 813 is the number so Myra Moss uh, without the H uh, 813 yeah make sure um, you know this takes an incredible amount of energy dealing with so many different personalities make sure y'all show uh, our elders support and, and, and show them love, you know, through energy, uh, energy exchange. So make sure you hit up Sister Myra Cash App, dollar sign Myra Morse 813. You know, I really appreciate her for coming on here and uh, and doing this. So make sure you show support. We're going to continue, family. Once again, if you're coming in late, the link is pinned at the top of the chat. And if you have a question, one question, ladies and gentlemen, because we're trying to get through, um, you know, as many people as we can. So just one question. And uh, Myra will answer it. She's been amazing tonight. So it's been an amazing broadcast. Once again, let's get to the next caller. I am fourth dimension. Are you there? 
Peace, love, and abundance to my soul, family. What's up? How we doing? Peace, peace, brother. Peace. How you doing, brother? Good, good. I'm grateful to be here, man. Sister Myers, mm -hmm. thank you for everything you're doing, first and yes. foremost. So it's crazy how the universe works because it's kind of like you indirectly answered my questions with the previous <laughs> uh, people that came up. So I'm a September 22nd Libra cusp, and I was kind of debating, okay, which one am I? So I'm deciding okay. to go with the Libra energy. You got um, the air. There yeah. rather than okay, okay, very good, yes, very much. So, I guess my question is Is my not not my purpose, but I believe women have such a strong role in a man's life. So, I grew up as a middle child, older sister, younger sister, and then my mom trying to play the mommy daddy role. So, I believe I need a strong woman by my side. So, is there a <laughs> certain sign or certain characteristics in a woman that I'm supposed to be looking for that's best suitable for? my life's purpose and my mission. Okay. Great question, brother. Um, there's some, uh, the things you're going to look at, you're going to look at your, your moon sign. You're going to look Libra. at your, your seventh house energy. And you're going to look at what sign your Venus is in, especially your Venus. Do you know what sign your Venus is in? My Venus is in Virgo. So that's what you will attract. That's what you will be attracted to. So, um, most likely, um, any other earth signs, um, especially Virgo, and then um, okay. we, um, we're going to be dealing with uh, Capricorn and Taurus, uh, most likely. But then take into consideration, like I said, your seventh house energy, and take into consideration your moon sign. And as you bring all yeah. those components together, you know, uh, one of those is stand out. But your Venus is what you attract what you're attracted to. Like That's I have a Sagittarius about. Venus and I was married to a Sagittarius okay. for 25 years. Okay. So that's wow. what you attract and what you're attracted to. So um, gotcha. that would be your first, you know, um, is what is on uh, what your Venus is in, but also that seventh house energy. Do you know what that is? Do you know what your rising sign is? I, I believe it's Pisces. I believe it's so that means yeah. your seventh house uh, would be Virgo. So wow. Virgo looks like it's <laughs> leading the back when it comes to the characteristics. And that Absolutely. doesn't mean it has to be a Virgo son, but right. it has to be, you know, Virgo has to be dominant as far as that would be what would balance you when it comes to your relationships, uh, the Virgo. Sure. Uh, and then, you know, um, any other maybe earth sign, uh, but yeah, it looks like Virgo okay. is going to be dominant. Now, um, also, um, you would be on the mutable cross. So that would even bring uh, even Gemini and Sagittarius to the table, you see. Uh, mm. Most twin souls are coming together from the same cross level, you know. So the mutable cross is Virgo opposite Pisces and Gemini opposite Sagittarius. So bringing a mate on that mutable cross uh, would bode well for that being your twin soul. You see, okay. so, not written in stone. Yeah, nothing's right. written in stone when you're dealing with spirit, but Absolutely. you're gonna, you know, it's gonna be surrounding um, that vibration. That energy, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so thank much, you. both of you. Thank you, brother Rich. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, my thank brother. You. Peace, peace, brother, peace. All right, let's get to the you next. You got that call. twin soul energy going on, don't you, brother Rich? <laughs> You're on that same cross level with your mate. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Mm hmm. That's. Good. I was. I was just thinking about that when you was talking to him. I was just thinking about that. Right. Yes. Just thinking about that. Oh man! Wow! What a show! What a show! What a show! Let's get to the next call. Uh, Sway. Am I saying your name right? Sway. Yes. Sway. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Hi, Sister Myra. Um, I Hi. actually sent I actually sent you a text um uh, maybe a month ago about an ultrasound that I had. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Um, and it showed segment that I was talking to you about. Yeah, I think it's, I vaguely remember. Yeah. I get so much though, but that yeah. sounds familiar to me. Yeah. So my question is. Um, I went to a God Power event that um, Brother Rich hosted with Billy Carson and Dr. B. Yes. And since then, like, 
I've been going through my different spiritual practices and um, for the last two months, I feel that I've been maybe contacted by um, other deities in yes. Egypt, like Sekhmet is one, Sisher, yes. Hathor, and many of them. And I'm just wondering, like, what does it mean? Because I've been getting like extreme downloads. Yes. And um, I'm an Aquarius sun, Libra moon, and Scorpio rising. Okay. So, and um, for what it sounds like, you're attracting uh, the mama deities, you know. Mm. Uh, um, and I don't yeah. know anything about them, and they just well, come I know up Hathor, meditation. Hathor is a mama deity, um, uh, but segment that could be more in the daughter tip, so the feminine uh, aspect. Uh, and you said you're what sun sign? Um, sun sign Aquarius, life path Aquarius. number one. So you're air and fire. You would deal. Yeah. You would be Aquarius Leo. That means that is now time. This is transformation time, and yeah. air and fire are external, which means it's now time for you to go internal to your earth and water, to your okay. feminine out for balance. You see, so that is why you're attracting uh, that water and earth that's the mama and the daughter that's the internal that's hidden um so you've mastered in the external air and fire masculine energy now it's time for you to balance that by going right. internal to your earth and water so that is why you're being uh enticed through those feminine deities um, there's others too yeah Sorry. um there's other ones like um Bennu, like the heron, Ra mm -hmm. and Thoth, like I get different, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like, um, I just, I just have like these certain contacts with them and like extreme downloads and all I do is write. Yeah. Um, and that's the only way to get it through, yes. but it's, but the female deities are more recent. Dominant too. right now. Yeah. yeah. They're pulling you internal. You know, we co we connect with the universe <laughs> internal, earth and mm -hmm. water, uh, through the rising of our kundalini through the chakras, yeah. all the way up to the crown chakra, where we make mm -hmm. a connection to mama universe, you see. So yeah. going internal, defining the value of the purpose you're here to serve, which is the earth element that's being secure from within. Uh, there's two prerequisites to stepping up as a royal ruler. Number one, you have to be secure from within. That's your earth element internally. And number two, you have to prove to the universe you're not going to abuse your power. See, that has to do with segment energy. Segment is that feminine, ferocious uh, feminine energy. Um, did we lose her? Because I don't see her picture anymore. No, I'm I'm here. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, segment is that ferocious feminine energy. Anytime you put um, Leo and Virgo together, you get segment energy. Uh, very ferocious. And all of them come under the auspices or the domain of cancer or Kali Ma. So we get Kali Ma, Virgo and Leo, which is segment energy. Segment is um, they release her at the end time to clean up the world, to clean up the, 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 the world at the end days. And her thirst of blood is so ferocious, they have to trap her back into captivity, you know, when she's done her job. Um, mm -hmm. That is the uh, segment energy under the auspices of Kali Ma, the very yeah. vicious and ferocious mama. That's the most destructive part of the astrological cycle from mm -hmm. Cancer, Leo to Virgo. That's yeah, when that energy come. comes through, like, I feel myself, like, super active and super, like, ready to get things done and, like, really driving towards my goals. But then, like, there was this one time that happened and I, like, drank some wine. And yep. that same night, I had a dream about her and, like, in the back of my house, like, there's a river. And I always have dreams about, like, um panthers <clears throat> back there or tigers or um cheetahs sometimes like it's always cats in my backyard Ooh. and um uh the great blue heron which i think symbolizes uh 
No, I think that's Bennu. But like, I don't know, and I don't do a lot of research on um, We're going to have to get to the next call of Myra. Yeah, it's, okay. it's time for you to step up, get righteously yeah. indignant about the injustice going on in the world, you okay. know, send out your energy uh, to contribute to that pot of righteous indignation so things can, uh, we can overcome this corrupted system and, you know, and start and step up to a new level of empowerment. And you're part of the uh, action uh, where things get really um, disruptive yes. for the physical illusion. So okay. you're well, on the right you. path. <laughs> I appreciate so it. Well. And thank All you, right. Brother Rich. All right. Bye. Peace, peace. Let's get to the next call. Let's get to Lady Bell. Lady Bell, can you hear me? Hello, peace, y'all. Um, my question was in regards to um, the last time I was on the live with um, Dr. Phil Valentine. I had mentioned that um, the father of my son ran away with him. He's now back in my possession. It took Wonderful. five weeks, it took five long weeks and a lot of money. Um, but I was wondering, because I am in the midst of building um, these technological products that I'm launching out to the world, because I'm an Aquarius North Node, I have a background in tech. And I feel like there's been this energy that's been trying to stop this from coming out. Can you kind of speak to the energies right now in relation to divine feminine and what we what our mission is right now and um, the forces that try to distract us or attack us when we are on our purpose, we're on our yeah, mission? Absolutely. Uh, the chosen ones are under attack. Uh, we are in the last days um, and they're very guarded now when it comes to us opening up uh, energy vibrations that's going to help others you know, uh, step out of this matrix. So mm -hmm. wherever you're strategic at in serving that role as a chosen one, uh, you've caught uh, the eye of, you know, the oppositional energy. And how you catch that eye is, uh, you know, they got systems like, you know, like infrared. They can see when your vibration has mm -hmm. uh, cracked that ceiling. You see, when you're vibrating at a level higher than they want the masses to vibrate at, that's how you get the attention and they will come after you um, trying to disrupt everything. But what you got to do, uh, and especially with that Aquarius, Aquarius, you have to know you are the creative ruler. You have to know. No one has no more power than you do to create your own reality. You have to know that you are protected. You have a whole entourage of universal energy uh, protecting you. Not only protecting you, but you putting out the protection for your loved ones. Because if they can't get to you, they're going to try to get to your loved ones as well to mm. manipulate you. So you have to know that you have protection. We operate through our imagination, especially Aquarius, the last air sign. So sending out that vibration of knowing that you are protected as a royal being, and that gives you the power to protect your loved ones. I'm greedy because I say, I want my loved ones protected, and I want my loved ones' loved ones protected. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh, my my, wow. If I, my energy can reach in the universe, wow. I want that protection. Ooh. So, but like I said, not enough just to know. Now you got to walk in that knowing. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we operate through the imagination. So put out that protection for yourself. Yes, they're going to be attacking. They, like the last, the well, first time I did Brother Rich's show, uh, they sent 96 miles an hour flat, uh, uh, what is it? Um, straight line wind mm. to my home. Okay. Yeah. And at night and all the lights went out. I couldn't even see, I heard things crashing in the back and all the power was out all over the city, you know, uh, trees and limbs were down. And when I came out of my house that morning, I had a few little twigs in my front yard, you see, mm -hmm. and that used to be my biggest worry, but now mm -hmm. I've become so secure that the weather can come, I can turn over and take a nap and go to sleep. 
Mm. Because I know I'm protected. When I say hammer time, you can't touch this. <laughs> That's the Aquarius mm. and Leo axis. That is when you know, you know your power and they can't touch you because you're vibrating at a high level. They're low level. Yeah. They have to bring you down That's before it. they can get you. And if hey. you stay up, especially in that knowing, then, you know, um, call yourself Miss Invincible. Yeah. And walk in that. Okay? You're protected. Hey, uh, hey uh, Lady Bell, give um, the people your um, contact to your tech before you get out of here. I appreciate the call. Great question. Let People who are interested in your tech, so do you have a, a contact info for it? Yeah, CamilleHall.js on Instagram and CreativeAmbition.net. Okay. Is the website. All right. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much for that right. message. Thank you. Peace, yeah. peace. Peace. Let's get to Jasmine. She's been trying to get in for a while. I just, Jasmine, you there? You've been trying to get in for a yes. while? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jasmine. What's up? Oh, peace. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> peace and blessings to y'all. Yes. Um, I hope I hope y'all having a good night. Um, I'll get to it. So um, I'm a Sag Sun, um, Aquarius rising, and Leo Moon. And so I live on the East Coast. Um, I've been here since I was a little kid, and something has been drawing me out with like further south and out west for about two years now. And I feel like I've gone as far as I could go here. And I truly feel like my wings won't fully spread until I leave. Um, part of part of me is afraid because my whole family is here, and even more, my family is moving down here. Um, but I feel very stagnant here um, in the Carolinas, and I'm I'm kind of just ready to go. And I feel like my my life's purpose and my mission will be better served. Um, I don't want to say better served, but I feel like my launching pad would be better there than it is here. <clears throat> okay. Um, and you use the word feel a lot. And that is the key. You know, trusting what you feel. And if you're feeling stagnated, then yes, that is your spirit way of telling you it's time to, to go. And if you don't go uh, as you're being um, inspired by your spirit to do, uh, a lot of things will begin to fall apart, you see. Um, because sometimes, you know, if we don't make the move, then the spirit makes the move. And it might not be in a way that we like. Uh, so um, it is time, you know, to kind of detach uh, from the family. Um, you know, uh, this is how you get to know um, you know, how to spread your wings. And it sounds like your spirit is trying to separate you uh, because it's having a trouble uh, getting that clear signal into you. It's too much clutter going on. And you may be too afraid of disappointing or what your family may have to say uh, as you begin to unplug from the matrix. We have to unplug from the matrix, which means we have to go against the grain of what uh, this illusionary uh, realm feel is right. Uh, spirit is opposite the physical. So that means unplugging and going in an opposite direction of where you're comfortable at. Like I said, you have to stay flexible to follow your spirit from one end to the <clears throat> opposite end. Anytime you get into one position and say, uh, this is where I'm at, you know, this is what I do, this is what I don't do, that's stagnation. And that is what you're feeling, stagnated, because your spirit is trying to influence and guide you to step out. And, you know, and you're, you're kind of fearful uh, and uh, resistant. Uh, and reluctant, especially when it comes, like you said, to leaving your family. Um, but that only indicates that you are uh, one in the family, you know, that has to take uh, that unique path uh, going uh, contrary to what your family is doing. Uh, and that's true for all of us at this point uh, when it comes to 
uh, the chosen ones of the family. Follow your spirit, honey. And uh, you use the word feel a lot. And that is what you have to do. You have to trust what you feel. That is how mama speaks to you internally through the water element from your ancient memory. So what mm -hmm. she's guiding you is to get in position of um, of where you, how you operate it in antiquity, you know, which is going to step you back into uh, your powers and your <laughs> gifts. It's time for us to open up to our powers and our gifts. But like I said, we have to unplug and we have to step up and get in partnership with our spirit, which means trust our spirit. So uh, even though it goes against your own mind, um, it's never going to lead you wrong. Um, and you will always be rewarded by going um, against the grain of the matrix and following your spirit. So that feeling of stagnation uh, is your spirit giving you that uh, because where you're at, you are going to be stagnated. You're too concerned about the people around you and what they may think about you going a different path than what they would approve of. So Wow. That was a great answer. Yeah. That's spot on. Thank you yeah. so much. Right. Thanks for the call, Jasmine. Thank you. Amazing advice from my <laughs> Wow. Your, your answers are helping everybody, not just the person you're talking to. They're and that's what it's supposed to do because we're dealing yeah. with energy. So anybody can identify uh, with that energy because you got all of it in you. Right, your sun right. sign is just your focus. <clears throat> what you came in here to focus through. So mm -hmm. that's what you're going to identify with the most. But whatever I say, it can touch a part of you, mm -hmm. uh, depending on where that energy is showing up for you. So, you know, anybody can identify with the information. Indeed, indeed. Let's get to the next caller. Alexander, peace, my brother. Yo, what's going on, man? Peace, y'all. All, All right. right. What's All right, your question, so my brother? My question is, okay, so... um. I have pretty much, I have uh, a Gemini moon, a Gemini Mercury, a Gemini Venus, and a Gemini rising. Um, and oh. I have a sun. And, you have a um, cancer sun? Yes. And okay. I want to, and so my wife, she's a Sagittarius. And um, we, we, we have businesses together. We make music together. We do a lot of things together. And um, I just wanted to understand how we can, because though we, though we do what we do together, it seems as though like it takes a while for us to kind of get everything off the ground because it's like I do a lot of I do a lot of different things. I feel like I, I've heard you say on multiple occasions that Gemini is the master channel. Yes. And um, yeah. it's like I can we both do a lot of different things. Me, me specifically, I, I'm into a lot of different things and it's hard to focus and streamline one thing yeah. at a time. So it seems like it takes forever to get one thing done. You know, oh, so, yeah. I just wanted to understand, you know, how we can, you know, balance with each other a little bit better or how we can, you know, what, I'm what is it with those alignments with, I know Sagittarius and Gemini are sister signs. So um, I just kind of. They're opposite signs. Yeah. They're opposites. They're complements of each other, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I was going to zero right into uh, that Gemini Sagittarius connection. And then the cancer, that's a cardinal. So that's the leader. Leading mm -hmm. to what you feel. You mm -hmm. see the master when it comes to uh, leading to what you feel. And once you open up and lead to what you feel, then that Gemini and Sagittarius, man, that's going to take off. What you're dealing with is the middle pillar here. Mm -hmm. Because Capricorn, uh, excuse me, Cancer is the opposite of Capricorn. And Gemini mm -hmm. is the opposite of Sagittarius. These four signs sits connected to one another. Sagittarius is uh, a, comp a complement to Capricorn. And then Gemini is a complement to Cancer. Right. You know? <laughs> and so that's the middle pillar. That is like the highest peak of the astrological cycle. That's mm -hmm. very strategic. And then with the Gemini, like I said, discernment, Gemini gateway, you two can really um, see through the illusion. You work well together in seeing the reality versus illusion. Uh, hi, honey. Yeah, <laughs> hi there. <laughs> you, uh, I think you guys are a optimal pair. 
you see, in your energy. You have a very strategic uh, position in the role that you're here to play in the final contribution to the fulfillment of a universal purpose. You're really very much a complement to one another, um, with especially that Gemini and Sagittarius balance, you know, and the Cancer leading the way right. as that cardinal sign. And she's the so cancer, the she's moon. what? She's oh, she's the Cancer, cancer Moon. moon. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you're in sync, the Moon <laughs> and the Sun. Mm -hmm. So you get the focus, and then she gets the internal. You know, uh, when it comes to uh, the master filler, cancers are masters when it comes to their feelings. You know, uh, they get their feelings hurt if the mailman don't leave them no mail. They're walking. <laughs> <in> the <motion. laughs> you know, but they're a leader when it comes to emotions. And then, you know, right next door. You got your Gemini to Cancer, and then you got your Sagittarius to Capricorn, mm -hmm. representing that middle pillar. So you guys have a very strategic position in this uh, role that you chose to serve together as twin souls. And um, like you said, channeling uh, from the three realms, from the soul realm, from the spirit realm, to the physical, you're the physical vessel that channels from that soul realm, the spirit realm, and then manifest that energy at the physical level. You are the boots on the ground who have access to information from the highest levels of the universe, channeling that, you know, don't doubt anything. The one thing about Gemini that can be problematic mm -hmm is there they can be micromanagers mm -hmm. and yeah, that can you know that can that can stagger the flow of creativity yeah, yeah for sure so you know wow. but your water the cancer moon and the cancer mm -hmm. sun is going to help keep that flow going you see keep mm -hmm. it flowing you know so you guys yeah. got some of the best energy you know to step up uh and uh channel information, manifest that information, you know, and you're definitely working as twin souls, you see. So for sure. very Excellent. good. Yeah, yeah. Very inspiring. Yeah, yes. I really appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah. That. Thanks yes. for the call, Alexander. Please, sure. please, All please, right. please. All right. All right. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Don't know what to say. Wow. <laughs> you got that you got that twin that twin soul energy tonight, Myra. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's time for the twin souls to come together because they represent the yin and the yang. And it's not mm -hmm. until the yin and the yang come into balance do we take that evolution to the next level. And it's time for our evolution. So it is time for the twin souls to come together. Mm, amazing. Yes. Let's get to, let's keep it going. Let me see. Uh, I would say about uh, 10 to 15 more minutes, then we get out of here, family. This okay. is This is just so good. This is like so good. Let's get to Nikki. Nikki's been on here for a while. Nikki, how you doing, Nikki? Yo, I can't hear you, Nikki. Let me do it. Can I unmute her? No, she got to unmute herself. Nikki, I can't hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hear me now? Yes. Yes. yes, Nikki. Yes. Okay. I'm, yes. I'm good. How are you? Thank you for your platform. Hi, Sister Myra. I'm such a big fan. You're such a great mm -hmm. teacher. I, I love learning mm -hmm. from you. Um, I have a yes. question. I'm a Taurus sun, Aquarius moon, and uh, Cancer rising. My question is about a yod. I have two yods in my chart. Um, both of them uh, have Pluto and Scorpio in the fifth house and Gemini, my Mars and Gemini in the 12th house. Um, what is your take on yods and what, what does that mean in my chart? That I have okay. two of them. With Go those ahead, you have what? That I have two of them with those placements with Mars. Oh, and okay. Okay. Um, okay, you said a Taurus sun, Gemini moon, Aquarius moon. Aquarius moon and then um uh what was that? I got cancer somewhere, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Cancer rising. Cancer rising, okay. Mm -hmm. Um okay, let me take that out the Leo. Okay. So we got two fixed signs going on here. Mm -hmm. We got Taurus a fixed sign, we got Aquarius a fixed sign, and then we got cancer, a cardinal sign. Um so um Values and we're in your energy right now. So, yeah, have you had your birthday or is it coming up? It was April 21st. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we're in your the sun, 
That means the sun is focused on and highlighting when it comes to your personality. Uh, and like I said, I'm a holistic. So I'm going to talk about the opposite sign, which is Scorpio, which represents your spiritual energy. So balancing uh, Scorpio and Taurus, that means it's time to transform when it comes to your values, you see. Uh, like I said, we can't take old habits and old values up with us. So that's the main energy of that Taurus and Scorpio. And then um, that um, Aquarius uh, moon, that means uh, right now, emotionally, um, you know, there's an evolutionary process going on. You know, you're ready to step up uh, it, it, how you feel when it comes to it's time to evolve. Um, this, um, this reality um, may be very trying on your nerves right now uh, because the sign of values and right now uh, things that went topsy-turvy when it comes to the values of the world right now. Um, so um, mostly on that fixed cross, but then that cancer cardinal sign, um, a leader when it comes to how you take actions, especially based on uh, your Taurus and Aquarius, which is that fixed cross. And as I spoke before about the fixed cross, Aquarius opposite Leo and Taurus opposite Scorpio, um, those are uh, what I call uh, the, the four horses of the apocalypse. Uh, they are the ones that does the heavy work, you know, uh, that reverses the energy from a mundane to a, uh, a royal empowerment. And so um, being discontent with the values that are showing up uh, in the world today brings forth your Aquarius moon, which is ready to explode, um, disrupt the status quo that has become stagnated and corrupted. And then the cancer is going to lead, as you take actions, lead others through what you feel, you know, uh, to step up to um, uh, a new humanitarian uh, empowerment. Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian. That is why the, all this happens in the Aquarian age, because it's time to come out of of the abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment. So your sensitivity through your Taurus, you know, the, your values uh, are going to feel um, discontent, you know, through that Aquarius moon, ready to make some explosive evolutionary, revolutionary uh, changes, and then lead the way through the cancer or the cardinal cancer uh, when it comes to your actions um, for what we all need to be feeling at this time uh, to step up to our highest purpose. So that seems to be the focus of what your you know what what revolves around your um, your energy here. You see, mm. does that seem helpful to you? That's does yes. that hit any points here? Yes, thank you. Wonderful, you're thank so you. welcome. Thanks for the call, Nikki. Thank you. Peace, peace. All right. Um, all right. So we're gonna. I'm gonna take two more calls. Then we get out of here. For those, um, could you tell them about how they could get a reading again, Sister Myra? If they okay, interested? it's um, uh, my website, um, sistermyra.com. Now this one does have the H on it. Uh, S I S T A R, uh, M Y R A A H, sistermyra.com. And when you go to the website. Uh, when you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see consultations and you tap into that and it'll, it'll lead you the way. Um, I think I'm out to maybe February or March right now. So that might be the first time you can get an appointment uh, around the February, March area. You see. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Like I said, I'm taking two more. I'm sorry if everybody's waiting, but uh, we can't stay on much longer. So I'm going to take two more calls. And then we're going to get out of here, family. Do I do appreciate everybody's participation. Let's get to Ascending Infinite Goddess. Peace, peace. Can you hear me? Greetings. Peace, sis. Can you hear me? Ascending Infinite Goddess, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. All right. There's a little right. bit of a delay. Sorry. Okay. Peace. Peace to you, Goddess Myra. Peace to you, God Rich. 
Yes. Thank you for taking my call. Mm -hmm. We're good? Yeah. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> I am also an angel oracle reader, and I recently gave birth, it's been a year now, February 14th, 2022. Since I gave birth and I started back doing my reading, I have noticed a shift in my energy when I connect with other people. My, my spells are more potent, my magic is more potent, my readings are more potent, but I can still feel their tug and their pull on me. And I recently spoke with a quantum physicist who was able to clear some things up for me, um, confirm some things for me about how we change energy no matter where we are in the globe. So I was just wondering, are there any points that, or any pointers you have to help me clear my energy field, clear my aura, anything a little more potent I could be doing. Um, my signs is a Pisces sun, Gemini moon, and Sag rising. Okay, so a Pisces sun, uh, Gemini moon, and a, what was that rising? What was your rising? There's a delay, give her a second, Mary, there's a delay. Okay. Did she hear me? Yes. What was that? Sagittarius rising. Sagittarius, okay. Sagittarius rising. Okay. We're getting a lot of balance going on here, especially with that Gemini Sagittarius axis of energy. Pisces, no wonder. That's the sponge, you know, that you soak in everybody's energy. What you're going to have to do is learn how to put up your um, your earth so that you're not so easily uh, penetrated. You know, a Pisces absorbs everything, you know, that full water, you see. So that is why other people's energy uh, sticks with you. Um, have you uh, practiced much when it comes to saging? Yes. Yep. That's, yeah, to me, that's the best way to cleanse your aura and your energy. Uh, do that saging. Um, learn how to put up your earth. Uh, as Pisces, especially put up your uh, Virgo, you see, uh, which will help shield you from being easily penetrated by other spiritual energy through that Pisces that soaks up like a sponge. So whenever you feel like you're being overwhelmed. Here's another thing you probably need to practice. And that is um, um, regularly going out and hugging a tree. Yes, yeah. Read the yes, yes. I've been doing that. There is a 200 year old tree in a park and I've recently oh, been. Beautiful. Yes, yeah. okay. you know, that, those are our closest ancestors, right? You see, and um, you are uh, so absorbed through your Pisces, you need to ground that energy. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, that's when you ground that energy. Go out there and hug a tree or put your feet, your bare feet in the, in the earth. Uh, I do spiritual cleansings. I do house cleansings. I cleanse people, houses of spirits. And when I do that, uh, when I finish the ritual, I always have to go outside and hug a tree and ground that residual energy that locks itself to me as I'm cleansing out, you know, uh, uh, that energy. Um, and the funny thing about it, when I did it, um, one time I did it with both a male and a female, and the male didn't feel that, you know, but the but both us women did, you see. Um, I guess because we're the receptacles and spirit is is air. So that's masculine. So, um, uh, yeah, you got to do a lot of grounding, you know, with the earth because that Pisces 
uh, will absorb a lot. And Pisces is the sign of the subconscious, you see. And right now it's time for us to cleanse and purify. And that's what your Virgo will do. Uh, the opposite sign of Pisces, it'll help you meticulously understand what details need to be cleansed from your um, for your wisdom and then uh, have clear access to your subconscious because that's what you're asking about, uh, uncluttering your subconscious because where Pisces absorb so much, you know, your Virgo is the one that will help dissect what areas you know, uh, need to be identified, cleansed out, purged in order for you to heal in your wisdom and have unfettered access to your subconscious where your true powers come from, you see. So wow. Wow. go ahead and, and get that, get that done. That earth, that earth, that earth. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. So, thank thank, thank you for the call. Thank you yes. for the call. What a wonderful exchange. Wow. All right, family, we're going to do one more call, and then I'm going to get out of here. Um, let me put Sister Myra's Cash App on the screen again. Give me that one more time, Myra. They got a lot of fake Cash App. Oh, okay. scam. I yeah, know. Yeah. I know. I've been seeing that. Um, yeah. uh, uh, Myra Moss, uh, without the Spell H, uh, M-Y-R-A. Uh -huh. M O S S and the numbers eight one three. Of course, the dollar sign ahead of that. Yeah. <clears throat> and we'll put my we're about to end pretty soon. I'm gonna put Myra's Cash App on the screen. I'm also gonna put mine's at the bottom. If you would like to support the channel Black Magic 363, and we're gonna get to one call or one last uh reading, and then uh we're gonna get then we're gonna get out of here. All right. Uh let me see. Um, yeah, I see some of y'all having problems with the super chat. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, you know, we're going we gonna to do two more. You mind doing two more, Myra? No, I don't mind. Are we going to do two more? Let's get to uh, okay. Tiona <laughs> Monet. Yeah, oh, Hi. my God. How y'all yeah. doing? <laughs> Thank you. How you doing? Yeah. You got, you got a question? You got a question yes, for me? Um, so I just wanted some advice on like, kind of like, um, you know, a path that I should be taking. Um, my sun sign is Aquarius, my moon is Leo, and my rising is Virgo. And um, I, I think I kind of know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm, I've am i been like at a pool of tug of war. So I kind of want to know if you kind of could give me some advice to kind of, you know, clarify it so I could just get at it. Okay, we're going to start off with balance in the first, you know, Aquarius and Leo. Opposite signs. Mm. I, I know I'm a creative ruler. That's what you got to walk in. When I run around talking about hammer time, you can't touch this. That should be your model. Okay? I'm yeah. um, hammer time. You can't touch this. Yeah. You know your power. You know the yeah. source of your power. And now you have to walk in that. It's time to walk in the knowing of your power. Now, why my face going to get stuck with my tongue sticking? <laughs> but so your uh, Aquarius and Leo yeah. is going to be that dominant energy of stepping in your knowing about, you know, being a creative ruler and walking in the knowing of the power you have to create your own reality. Nobody has more power than you do to create your own reality. You just have to know that. And then the Virgo, of course, that is all about that cleansing you know, and purification, uh, walking in the knowing um, and iced with wisdom. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what we're doing here. Um, walking in the knowing through the Aquarius and Leo and then icing it with the wisdom of Virgo, you see. So those are the three main things. Your wisdom and spiritual knowledge, you know, um, a cleansing of false values, uh, to the matrix, and then stepping up, you know, in the power of your knowing, you see. So we got to know it in order to activate it. And that's what the Aquarius and Leo axis is all about, stepping up to knowing your power and then being able to walk in that. Like I said, you're going to be most personally affected because your sun sign is 
what you came into this lifetime to focus on, representing your personality. So it's going to be more personal for you to step up and walk in that knowing, yes. of, you know, the power you have. Start listening to your hunches, your intuition, your inner voice. And I don't care how bizarre things may seem, the more bizarre you get the message, the more you know it's coming from your spirit. Because it's a time to adapt you to an mm -hmm. opposite reality. No such thing as coincidence. Start trusting that inner voice, that intuition, you know, your first thought. That is how your spirit is getting through, you know, to give you the guidance. Don't second guess your spirit. It may seem like it's, you know, weird, but that it all the more validate that it's your spirit because it's trying to adapt you to an opposite reality. And then Virgo, the sensitivity. You know, Virgo has both going with it. It has the air and the earth because its planetary ruler is Mercury. Mercury is the magician of the planetary energy, but it's also the one that brings messages from the three realms. So the sensitivity of being able to access the messages from the three realms and then stepping up in the knowing of that inspiration and then acting on that knowing that is the thrust of your three energies. Okay. Oh, wonderful. So much. Thank hey, thank, so much. Thanks for the call. Appreciate the call. Thank you. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. All right, I love all the way my face is getting frozen in some funny yeah, ways. Keep, <laughs> yeah. Let me, let, me, let me see if I could, uh, <laughs> hold up. Let me see if I could, uh, um, it's okay, yeah. honey. It's okay. I'm okay. laughing at it. All right. You know. Everything's right. good humor for me. <laughs> Indeed. Let's get to our, this is the last call of y'all. I appreciate all the calls, but we got to get out of here. Miss Brown. Miss Brown, are you there, Miss Brown? How you doing? Greetings. I, I can't, oh, we I can't, can't hear you. you. Yeah. I'm sorry, family. I'm, I was saying peace, peace, sister Myra. Yeah. It's an honor yeah. to be here with all of y'all. Brother Rich, I feel like you're my twin because we're both September 17th. Ooh, and okay. I think you're Aquarius Moon. Say that again. Are you Aquarius Moon as well? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm, I don't, I have no yeah. idea. I know I'm a Capricorn rising. I know that, but I don't know if I'm Aquarius Moon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, Sister Myra, um, I'm a Virgo Sun, Aquarius Moon, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. Libra rising. But my question is. Mm -hmm. My north node is in Scorpio, my south, and Taurus. And even though I've done a lot of research, I still would love your perspective on that um, that exchange, that, that north node information, which I understand is, like, important from your life. Path. Okay, you said you want more information on your nodes. Is that what you're asking about? Yes, Okay. Yes. Okay. And you said that your node, your south node is where? My south is in Taurus and my north is in Scorpio. North is in Pisces. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Taurus. Yeah. Scorpio. Where am I going here? Okay. Yeah. Taurus and Scorpio. Uh, your south node represents your past life energy. What lessons you learned in your past life. Okay, that you're bringing into this lifetime to uh, carry towards your north node, which is how you fulfill your purpose and your destiny, you see. So learning past life lessons. South node, Taurus? Yes, um, north Scorpio, okay. yes. And the north of Scorpio. So you came in here to learn when it comes to your values and your habits. That's what you came here to learn about, uh, transforming habits and values, okay? That's that Scorpio Taurus axis of energy. And then, um, let's see here. Um, and then, okay, where did I write it down? Oh, uh, Virgo, right? Virgo sun sign? Yes, ma'am. September, that's right, sept September 17th. 17th. So the uh -huh. sun sign, um, no, okay, the sun sign Virgo, um, that's where your wisdom comes in at, through your sensitivity. Earth picks up through their sensitivity. Air picks up through direct communication with spirit, 
Fire picks up through intuition and water picks up through the subconscious, okay? So um, the sensitivity of the Virgo when it comes to cleansing and purifying of false values for your wisdom. And then uh, your Aquarius moon um, is like um, different and unique, you know? Uh, Aquarius is where we find our uniqueness at. So when it comes to your emotions, you're very unique in the way that you feel, you see. Uh, and, um, and then your Libra rising is how you take action and balance out, especially between that earth and that air. When we're dealing with the earth, we're dealing with our sensitivities, our values, uh, internal. <clears throat> and when we're dealing with the air, we're dealing with our, our mind. And especially Aquarius, the the last air sign. So your emotional, uh, your moon uh, is dealing with, um, you know, it's kind of like uh, your emotions being guided by your highest knowing. You see, um, you're almost. I would say you're almost like on automatic pilot. Mm. Trust what you feel. And just move out on that. Don't second guess, you know, trust it. You know, I did a hypnotherapy uh, reading in August. And one of the biggest surprises that came out of that is I got to talk to the spiritual council. And I was told that everything I was asked about, I already knew. I just didn't trust that I know knew it, you see. Um, that's what I'm telling you. You know, trust what you feel and that you know what you're picking up is real. You see? So don't second guess. And you're going to pick up through your sensitivity. There's a dominance in your air because Virgo represents both the air and the earth. Because the planetary ruler is Mercury, which is an air planet. But the sign is Earth. So... Uh, they're kind of going between the earth and the air, uh, what they know and their sensitivity. That is how you're going to absorb the wisdom of how you're being guided in what you feel, which taps you into the highest knowing of energy and then bringing those two that earth and that air and the balance through your Libra moon, uh, Libra rising, you know, uh, balancing out that earth and that air through that Libra rising in the way that you move and take action, you see. Mm -hmm. The key to everything in the universe is you don't blend energy, you harmonize energy. And you have, um, so it's all about how you're harmonizing you know, between that earth and that air for you. Those are the dominant um, elements for you. Like I said, the highest perspective is the four elements, you see. The signs fine tune each element, but the highest barometer is the four elements. So the earth and the air grounding you when it comes to what you know spiritually. Manifesting because we create through our thoughts, and that's the air element, Father's spirit. So you have that going on, balancing what you know, and then being able to manifest it, you know, at ground level through the Virgo, uh, the sign, and uh, the earth element is where we manifest you know, uh, that energy. So by tap into your highest note through what you feel and then bringing all that into balance and in harmony through your Libra. Helpful? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. Much gratitude, Brother Rich. Thank you for saving Thank the you. best for last. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the call, Ms. Brown. Uh, Peace. Please. Please. Yo, yo, everybody in the chat. Yo, there's somebody who's been spamming my chat, Danny Tava. I gotta bring it up. She's been spamming the chat for 30 minutes. <laughs> I had to, I had to ban her for five minutes because she's so. Danny, I'm bringing you all, Danny. Go ahead. Come Hi, on, everybody. Danny. What's up, Hi, Danny? Family. Oh my God, family. family is Danny. 
Thank you, Reggie. Oh my God! It's me. <laughs> I'm sitting here at the sunset. I'm sitting here at the sunset. Like, oh, I just, I'm just gonna visualize the sunset and make it happen. So, oh my thank God. you, Brother Rich. Yeah, one um, question, Daddy. What well, good, Daddy? Good. Daddy. Okay, so <laughs> I have been really tapping into my intuitive side, following my first mind, and the signs is real. Um, so I just want to be able oh, to, to eliminate the doubt in me. I feel like I have the answers in me, but I'm afraid of that greater version of myself. Um, and I'm afraid to yes. separ separate from my past, to step into that greatest version of myself. Um, my birthday is 8 14 98. My rising sign, it says a, a Taurus. No, my moon is a Taurus. I'm a Leo, and I think my rising sign is a Scorpio. And okay. I'm a life path Here number 22. I thought I didn't there. But oh, thank you that's for a putting me on this call, y'all. <laughs> yeah, 22 is a master number, spiritual mastery. 11 is personal mastery, and 22 is spiritual mastery. So you're in a spiritual mastery year, you mm -hmm. see. And um, we keep dealing with these opposites, man. Um, that's what's getting me, uh, because now, let me see. Uh, no, you said Leo, Sun, uh, Taurus, Moon. Yeah. And Virgo rising. That's no, Scorpio. Right? Okay. Scorpio. Oh, Scorpio. There is the opposition. You know, I don't know why it says uh, Virgo. Uh, that's been coming up quite a bit. So there's the opposition between Taurus and Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So uh, your, uh, your Taurus moon and your Scorpio rising. So taking actions based on um, the value, you know, of what you feel. Uh, and then mm -hmm. the Leo, the sun, exposure. Leo is always about exposure, things becoming clear. That's the sign of blessings, you know, because uh, okay. the sun always represents blessings, overall blessings, you see. Mm -hmm. You know, the sun uh, represents, uh, Leo represents the sun, which is a central point for energy in the universe. And then it also represents the heart in the body, which is the central point for blood. Most Leos mm -hmm. are pretty psychic. My mama was Leo because they <laughs> bring all the energy together. Yes. You know, and it's about being holistic. People ask me, how did you get into astrology? You know, and I, when I, uh, when everybody was like, what's your sign? You know, I thought Capricorn was boring. I appreciate it now very much, but at the time I thought it was boring. So I studied all the signs. That's what gave me a holistic view. And that's what <laughs> set me on my path. Path. And that is the same type of energy that Leo brings to the table because it brings all the energies together for a holistic view. That is why they're very psychic. And then Leo is the sun. So it exposes, you know, it's your focus and your exposure, what you came into this lifetime to expose in your focus when it came to uh, your purpose. And your purpose mm -hmm. is going to be dealing with that Taurus and Scorpio, which I've said all night long, transformation, Scorpio, of values, Taurus, right. you see. So uh, transformation means the death of the old for a rebirth of the new at a higher level. The old has to go in order for uh, the new to blossom. So your role, um, that my, what I keep saying about Lot's wife, we can't be on to issues and values of the past. That's keeping us grounded in the illusion, you know, holding on to issues of the past and turning into a pillar of salt when gateways are opening ahead of you to evolve you to a new level. So right. that is the purpose you're here uh, to focus on, uh, to shine a light on and to expose how when we talk about Leo, son, we're talking about a resurrection of your power. Fire is wow. always power. When in the spiritual rotation, like in the physical rotation, we go from, and on the fire axis, we go from Aries to Leo to Sagittarius. But on the right. opposite spiritual rotation, on that fire axis, we go from <clears throat> Leo to Aries to Sagittarius. That means okay. the resurrection of the sun into that 
uh, his power. And when I say he, I'm only talking masculine or external. So the resurrection okay. of your son into your power, and um, then you resurrect into Haru or Aries, where you come to the full 360 degrees of your uh, personal power. And then the Harus all come together as Sagittarius, which represents the SARS energy or the abundance of stepping into your collective power because the planetary ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter, which is the great beneficent and whatever Jupiter touches, it brings in abundance. So wow. you as Leo resurrecting into Haru, your power, and then coming together collectively uh, in uh, transformation of values, so stepping mm -hmm. up uh, and coming to our full collective and abundance of power. That's where we're headed right now. The great creative yes. place, Sagittarius, yes. you know, and um, and Leo will start that on the spiritual rotation as it resurrects in power. You see, so mm -hmm. um, you I got want, a very strategic um, purpose. Thank you so much. Uh, I noticed one thing. My dad, he's a he's a Taurus. Um, rest in peace to him. He's been gone for some years, but he's a Taurus, and then my my moon sign is a Taurus. So I'm like, what's the correlation there? Like that was. I just want to. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your father is. Uh, he's just on the front line, you know, mm -hmm. using that Taurus connection, you know, uh, to help be of an influence and a guidance, especially when it comes to your right values, you see. So anytime you get off step in your values and you feel you feel something go whoop, <laughs> that's your father saying, no, girl, <laughs> you know, no, no, no. Don't take right? that path, go the other way. <laughs> know that your father is in your life constantly and he's gonna step up and step in in anytime you need him call on yes, him anytime you know especially when it comes to uh understanding what is a value in your purpose that is where your father is going to be very instrumental in giving you some guidance and some influence from the spiritual level <laughs> he purposely went on that he purposely went to that level mm -hmm. so he could be here for you at this time in guidance, you see, protection. Yes, and yes. Um, so, no, he's, all they lose is their physical body. Okay? Right. And you have more yes. access to them than ever when they make their transition. We're spiritual beings having a physical experience, not the other yes. way around. So That's right. You're more you connected me best. to the spiritual level. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Dan, Dan, well, Danny. Say thank you, Brother Rich. You're amazing. Like, you you being born on this earth, phenomenal. I just love your story. Your everything you do. Thank you, Sister Mama Myra. Y'all are amazing to be with in the presence of y'all. It's just a blessing. And I seen a rainbow today. Crazy. Like, it's crazy. So I love y'all. Thank you. All right, Danny. All right. Have a good yes. night. Peace. Right. Peace. Love you all too. Right. What a show. Yeah, Danny made it, y'all. Danny made it. What a show, y'all. What a show. Wow. Oh, Myra, I want to, yeah, what a show. Amazing. I want to thank you once again for coming on the show and doing this. I mean, I, I could imagine the energy it takes to do this. Wow. Oh, it's Amazing. definitely my pleasure. I love it. You know, I love it, Brother Rich. You see, I come alive. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I see. I see it. I see it. This was like phenomenal. This was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Um, once again, you cannot stay, say this enough. Uh, what is your website or your contact info so they could get in touch with you also if they okay. want to read it? Okay. Uh, like I said, the only way to get a reading is through my website, sistermyra.com. Uh, S-I-S-T-A-R-M-Y-R-A-H. Um, that is where you uh, sign up to get a reading. But like I said, I'm all the way out to like February or March right now mm -hmm. uh, for the first time you can get a reading. Um, so, um, and, and and then uh, once you once you get the reading, uh, then you'll get my, um, uh, my number, which a lot of people have already, uh, but I uh, really don't want people contacting me that way. Um, you know, if you do contact me through the phone, uh, just do it through the text message. That's the only way I, um, 
respond is through the text message because I, I get so many calls um, that I have to use the text message to respond to uh, your questions or, you know, um, um, you know, anything you, if you need to get in touch with me, with me for any reason. Um, so, um, but I'm hesitant about giving out the number because, uh, you know, I, I, every time I do, I get barraged with calls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though I tell them, you know, uh, you can't get an appointment through, um, you know, my phone anymore. You have to go to the website. Uh, and, um, but, um, like I said, you can't get an appointment till February or March. So I'm putting my number out there, but I'm going to warn you again, don't call me for a consultation. Okay. You can only do that through the website, but if you want to text me with questions or information, then that's 336-965-0180. So the only thing I will respond to is text messages, not voicemails mm -hmm. or phone calls, text messages. But that's, that's it. That's the information. All right. So I'm just posting Sister Myra's phone number. Um, on the screen, you heard exactly what the queen said, 336-965-0180. This is strictly for Texans, not to talk to Sister Myra to get a reading. This is for Texan for information pertaining to pertaining to what, Sister Myra? Well, I mean, if they have some, some, questions, some questions, you know, questions. and, you know, I communicate through the text message. I will um, communicate with you through the text message <clears throat> for questions. And, uh, and then after you get a reading, I tell uh, the people you're in my network and mm -hmm. you have access to me for any questions you may have about the reading uh, through that text message. So, um, but other people, you know, like who don't, uh, can't wait till uh, February or March mm -hmm. uh, to get a reading, uh, they can contact me through the text message for, you know, questions when it comes to uh, mm -hmm. tapping into spiritual information. So Indeed. I will respond. In that way, yes. Yeah. And for those who came in late, her readings are phenomenal. Got one in 2005, family. <laughs> Got one in 2005, and it changed my life forever. She was spot on. She predicted things that happened in my life that month and years later on. So Sister Myra is one of the best at what she does, and we have to show her, um, give her flowers while she's alive and appreciate her while she's alive, just as we do every, all, all our other greats that are that are here walking the earth right now. So um, with that being said, I want to thank Sister Myra. Yes. I want to thank everybody in the chat. This is Brother Rich Black Magic, and we are signing out. See you next time, family. Peace. Love you, family. Take care. Peace, family. <laughs>